Today I'm going to demonstrate the axle peg created in Inventor. Remember that anything that I do, there's more than one way to do. I'm just showing you one possible way to do it, and I'm probably not going to go through every single dimension. My favorite way to create the axle peg is with a revolve instead of going ahead and doing multiple extrusions. So I go ahead and sketch half the profile of it. So I'm going to come into Inventor, and I'm going to do a new standard IPT. I'm going to create a sketch, pick a plane. I don't worry too much about the plane. Some teachers may be a little pickier about that. And I'm going to go ahead and sketch out what half that profile looks like. I'm trying to make it close to the right size. That way it doesn't do a lot of adjusting as I draw it. I've got an arc coming out from that point. So I'm going to accidentally drew that line. Actually come in from this side now. And I'm just sketching it. I can add my dimensions as I sketch it or after the fact. And I'm going to do them after the fact on this one. So I want to make sure it doesn't go tangent to either of those lines. That will give me issues later on. Now I can start dimensioning. It tells us that the bolt is, if I come back here, the thread note tells us it's quarter 20 UNC by 1 inch. So that means the bolt portion is 1 inch. And our threads are offset from this end to quarter inch. So if I come back into Inventor, I can dimension this portion to 1 inch. We know the head of the bolt is 0.125. This little piece here is 0.031. We have a diameter on that portion that tells us it's 0.422, so I divide that in half. Inventor will do that for me. This is a quarter inch bolt, so once again I divide that in half. This uh, curve right here, if I come back to the Word document, tells me it's 236.236 for our radius. And that still doesn't look quite right. We still have a green line, so we need to slide this somewhere. And if we look at the Word document, it tells us that we have a, half, a quarter inch flat there. So I'm going to take this dimension here. And I'm going to make it half of my quarter inch so that it goes ahead and gives me my flat surface. Now I'm ready to revolve that. I could put my chamfer in at this point, but I'll do it later. And I just hit R to get that revolve. Right there is my bolt. Now I can do my chamfer. I can do my thread. I can do the hole at the end here. To get my thread, I drop down under hole, select thread, pick my surface. And I can go ahead and uncheck full length. It told us a quarter inch offset, but if I type that in here, most of the time, it gives me this offset this way. So I leave that at zero, and I just shorten down the length of my threaded portion to 0.75. To add my chamfer, a couple ways I can do that. I can drop down and click chamfer, or if I click on this edge, left click, right there's chamfer I can left click on. Gets me in there as well. I believe that's a 0.03. I'm going to double check here. 0.03, 45 by 0.03. So I can go ahead and hit OK. Now on this end, I've got to create a sketch for that hex head that will uh, run this bolt. So I drop down under rectangle to get polygon. It's already set to six sides. I'm not too concerned about inscribed versus circumscribed right now. I'm going to hit escape to get rid of all those pretty pictures. And dimension. It tells us it's 5 30 seconds across flats. So 5 divided by 32 from one flat side to another. And if you want this blue, all we have to do is apply a horizontal or vertical constraint to one of the edges. Rotates it, everything else is cylindrical, doesn't really matter. We can finish sketch. And extrude tells us that it has a depth of 0.111. And cut. And go into it. OK. Right there is the axle peg. Remember, there's more than one way to do anything that we do in Inventor. I just demonstrated one way that I like to go ahead and do it.